12, new business, E. <coughs> settlement and relocation of reconstruction agreements with Clear Channel Outdoor, Inc. So moved. Second? Second. We've got public comment cards. Yeah, no, it's, it's, a, a, it's new business E. Converted them to 12 E. Okay. So everybody who gave a card for H should be in that one. Okay, Peter, Tim, and Joanne Golden. Thanks. Yes, Peter, Tim, and this is on the uh, billboard line so that everybody complained about that uh, shining in their window. And. Uh, it seems that now uh, they're going to pay us $50,000 a year plus a 10% uh, increase after five years, for 30 years. Uh, 50 years, I'm sorry, for new 50 years they want to contract for. Do you people still regret having them have lighted signs on I-95? I know they are very bright when I come home in the evening. I don't know how they are directed. I don't know whether the new LBA lights they're going to be any better or they're going to be worse. But I think the worst is what I expect. Because when you change lighting, it's because you're getting more lighting out of it. It's not just because you want to change the bulbs. So I do believe that this is not a good thing for late work. And I wonder what you all think about it. And please answer me. Thank you. Ms. Colden? Oops, Followed by Barbara Jean Webb. Jermaine Golden, 502 North Conway. Um, when this came up the first time, way back, I can't remember when it was, but I remember I was adamantly against it. Uh, billboards in the city of Lake Worth, and it was a, I think it was like a 19 year that was voted on. Uh, and now it's 50 years, and I'm wondering what kind of negotiation was done to make it from 19 years to 50 years. Of course, we probably won't have to worry about 50 years because the party won't be there in 50 years. But uh, I was wondering what kind of arrangements West Palm made with their lighted billboards, because I know they have a whole new bunch of them, and some other towns made with uh, Clear Channel or whoever owns it now. And uh, it is a violation of our driving down the highway. I mean, it's very bright. It's very bright for those people that live in the neighborhoods, and I'm sure you've all been over there and see it, but they look outside their windows and that's what's out there, is a big, huge sign that's lit up forever and ever. So um, I don't know what kind of negotiation was made, I just find 50 years settlement. Uh, what would it be if the settlement was in perpetuity? Uh, maybe we would get more money, because perpetuity is a much longer time. Maybe they would fork over more money for the next couple of years. So, um, I don't know uh, about the settlement. I understand that it was done quietly. We didn't hear about it until it came up on the agenda tonight. So, uh, and that was very disconcerting because it was a long time problem in our city with those lights on our residents. So, um, I don't know if you can answer the question, but uh, if you can, that'd be great. Barbara Jean Weber. I remember this is one of the few times I lost my temper here, and I think slammed my hand down here. This company is backed, I did some research, silly little old Polish me online, is backed by CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System, and they have, they actually threaten cities, if you don't put this up, they sue you. That is their MO. There are lawsuits all over the country. This goes back a number of years when we originally got it. I caution you to make such a move and to do a little bit deeper research into it. I understand they also have name changes, so the paper trail is very difficult to follow. But I caution you, and certainly against 50 years. But they've gone from city to city to city. The one I remember is in Dania. And if you didn't comply with putting up this sign with this big couple of million dollar reward, so it's almost like capitalizing on the economic problems of cities. So I ask you not to do this. Do more research and find a better way. Find a better way. Thank you. Thank you, Peggy Fisher. 
Peggy Fisher, North A Street. Um, I'd like if someone could clarify exactly which sign this is, as there are a number of signs, 10th Avenue down to 6th Avenue. Um, I live on North A Street, um, so I look west. Um, I'm fortunate I don't have any bother from that. I'm more bothered by street lights than I am by that. But I'd like some clarification because there are a lot of billboards on the west side that face east. And there's one on the west side by the power plant that faces west. And if it was a problem for the roadway, the Department of Highway Safety and Motor Vehicle Reporting and uh, FDOT would have addressed it. Thank you. Thank you. City Manager, because this was um, <coughs> a lawsuit and because we had negotiations and one of the reasons why it wasn't um, public yet because we were let me, in closed room. Let me attempt legal to meetings. walk everybody through and, and please, Madam Attorney, smack me if I'm wrong on any of this. Uh, back in 2001, we actually, the city entered into a settle agreement with the predecessor of Clear Channel, which was uh, Florida Outdoor Advertising. And the agreement allowed them to put up the billboard. Um, and it's just, um, it's at 1802 4th Avenue North, just west of I-95, if that answers the location question. So it's on the west side of I-95. Um, so it's a static billboard. Um, unfortunately, for whatever reasons, and again, we inherit these things, the settlement agreement didn't contain a termination clause. Okay, so that language was there and it was part of a settlement agreement. There was not any into it. Um, in 09, Clear Channel, who became, you know, took it uh, from them, uh, approached the city about putting up LED lights because that's the latest thing. And um, it said that in that same 2001 agreement, and I'll, I'll quote, the sign may be illuminated. However, a sign which contains, includes, or is illuminated by any flashing, intermittent, or moving lights is prohibited, except that lights embodied in the sign may be used. Okay. Unfortunately, that agreement also contained really crappy language. So Clear, Child, uh, Clear Channel filed a lawsuit <coughs> to get the LED lights, and um, we started having discussions about a settlement agreement to try to um, get some teeth into this thing because if they had prevailed on a lawsuit and based on this language advice was it probably was likely the sign would be there would be LED and it would be there forever so agreements that were written back in 2001 and entered into not written well and you know in all fairness not anticipating some of these issues is where we are so we're, we're starting from that standpoint and that's where the settlement came forward with, well, if they're going to uh, pursue and we're going to allow the LED lights, then uh, there would be um, space available for the city to use. Um, it would receive 10 hours a month of free public service advertising, and we would receive 25000 a year per digital face, so it would be $50,000 a year. And yes, there would be the 50-year clause in it. So people... I just wanted to make sure people understood that there was a process. We started from a really weak kind of a standpoint in the, in the discussions, and that was all conveyed to you all in closed-door sessions with your attorneys um, through this process. Does that help clarify? Commissioner Marissa? And, and also part of the process during the lawsuit, we were challenged with going out to the property and seeing exactly where the property was. It wasn't close to any homes. It um, sits back. It's close to the tracks and, and dust dusty, dusty road, and, you know, um, that was part of our challenge to see exactly where it was and who it would actually directly affect. Um, the mayor was very good at, you know, with her um, background in advertising, you know, we negotiated other numbers. The numbers were very low when they came to us. Um, I think Commissioner uh, Meyer brought up a couple good points to, you know, extend and, you know, what if this happened. So, you know, it, it was very well thought out and, and we went back and forth um, during the, the, the case. So, you know, it, it wasn't a perfect, but we also, in the 50 years, we even had discussions, I think, on the 50 years that, you know, this technology will not be this technology in 50 years. So most likely, you know, in 25 years, they're going to have to come back because there's going to be a, something new, bells and whistles, that, you know, most likely uh, whoever sits here will have to, you know, adjust the contract. Try five. Oh, no, it's changing. Yeah. 
Commissioner Ms. Boyd? Um, I think that from what my recollection of the closed door meetings, what, what the city manager described and what Commissioner Amoroso described is pretty, pretty consistent with what I heard also. Um, I think probably all of us expressed a degree of concern over, that none of us are very keen on, on, some are more tolerant than others, but a bunch of us definitely had concerns about the illuminated lights. I raised the concern about safety. You know, are we going to have, do we have liability exposure if a driver is driving along 95, gets in an accident, says they were distracted by the, the sign, and it's our sign, do we have liability exposure on it? And I don't remember if I got a very clear answer on that. I think the, I think the answer, now that I recollect, maybe the attorney uh, has an answer on it, but I believe the answer that was given was that this sign meets all of the federal and DOT whatnot requirements. I did not, my response was very similar to yours, Barbara, that I don't find that very convincing. And uh, I think what you mentioned that, that there are, I don't know whether Clear Channel was one of them, but that was your research, but there are companies that are very aggressive, take advantage of the economic challenges that cities face and basically ram these things through. The challenge that we had was the advice that was given to us by our attorneys was based on the contract that existed, or contracts, I guess, 2001, 2000, whatever, um, we could try to fight it, we would probably lose, and they suggested this was a better of lesser of evils. I don't know if I agree, but uh, I'm not the attorney. I think the only thing that I would say to add to that is that the key, I think, for me was going out to the location. In fact, we waited and called a second, another meeting, just to go out and look at the location. Because unlike the other billboard <coughs> that's right sits right near a residential area, um, this one did not. So it made it a bit more tolerable. But again, that I think was the biggest consideration from all of us, how visible that light was to people into residents when, when it's mainly an industrial area that's inhabited in the daytime or that doesn't make as big an impact. Do you want May I I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. We have a chance. It's like a lighthouse still. You can see it for miles. Okay, we've got a motion on the floor and a second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All those opposed? Nay. Aye. Motion carries four to one. Moving on to the next item that was also pulled was Benny's on the beach. That was moved from item B from consent 